Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. You know, we discuss from time to time artists. Artists that are fans first and foremost. They were born and bred and have become a part of the Bond community and something, something sparks within them to take their passion and put it down into a particular medium. And today we're talking about Sean Longmore. Now, Sean is a self-professed Bond fanatic. And we love that about him because he's, 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 he's family. He's one of us, right? He's, he's part of the Bond community. But what he's done is he's taken some amazing, amazing thoughts and visions in his head and has put them down into something that we can now hold. And I want to show these to you. I just received these not too long ago in the mail. They're about postcard size, maybe about paperback size, but they're examples of just some of his amazing artwork. For example, he's done versions of the pan covers, but not like anything you've seen before, not something from the 1950s, something from today, 2020, 2021. For example, this, No Time to Die. Look at this. This is as if it was imagined or reimagined as a pan cover. And look at the colors. And look at the art. It's the first thing when I opened the envelope, it struck me were the visuals. You know, this explosive action that sometimes we miss nowadays, but it's all back. It's all back like they understood how to do in the 60s and 70s and even the 80s. And then, lest you think that's it, it's a cover, you flip this postcard around and it's the back cover as if this was one of the amazing great pan paperbacks that we all fell in love with either later in life or even when they first came out for some of us lucky ones. And look at this, look at the art. It's got that same kind of sepia neutralization and he's done so many of these. You know, this started out as an inspiration that has truly formed into different things, even to the point, wait for it, oh wait for it, a video game. If a video game like Nightfire was a novel, was one of these pulpy Ian Fleming type things. And look at this, lest you think that doesn't have a back on it. It does. So, I mean, look, Sean is, is, is a fan that's all about what would he like as a fan? And then he takes that and he puts it through the filter of his, his artistic talent. And out the other side comes these amazing works of art, even to the point of taking a lot of, for example, Japanese influence, and doing his own posters. You know, if he put on kind of that marketing and poster hat, what would he like as a part of these types of things? And so today we have a distinct pleasure of talking to the man himself. Yes, you know, we're all at home right now and enjoying you know, content creation and talking to people, meeting new friends. And so today we get to speak to Sean Longmore and ask him, where does all these incredible things come from? Let's go over to him. All right, and just like movie magic, you know, with technology on our side because of this whole pandemic, I have right here, Sean Longmore himself. Sean, welcome to the show. Hi, David, thank you for having me. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too, uh, a beautiful view. And already I'm starting to see around your, your pad remnants of your artwork. So it's good that you have some pride in what you do. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, but this one's this one's not one of mine. This one's an original up here. Oh, very nice. This is the original Majesties on Canvas, which I love. And so oh, I keep gosh. my inspiration around me. So let's start with that word, inspiration, because what I did for the audience, I just went over some of the wonderful pieces that you sent. You've got to you've got to back it up for us. So <laughs> for those of you that want to get to know. The, the visionary, the artist behind these a little bit better in all of your work. How did this begin? I mean, how did you move from what you do potentially for a living to Bond fan to these? Absolutely. So going way back, I'd say I'm a Bond fan before anything else. I've been a Bond fan since I was little. It's one of the first things I can remember. And it's Bond that sort of inspired me to be where I am. Um, I can remember being six or seven and I have the big James Bond movie poster book that came out about 2001, huge book. And I can remember getting that one Christmas and opening it and reading through it and just falling in love. Since then, as I've grown up, I've sort of decorated my room with Bond posters and stuff. Um, 
I was never much of an artist at school. I wasn't allowed to do art at school because they thought I was rubbish at it. <laughs> Absolutely. I, could, I sat in my, my GCSE parents' evening and my teacher sat and looked at me and he said, Sean, you're not going to take art at GCSE. And I was like, okay, no, no, I'm not. Subtle. Um, but I have to ask off the bat, just to step back for a moment, because I always enjoy the psychology of why a Bond fan gravitates to one corner or the other. Like I'm, I'm very much into the style, clothing, you know, type of thing. And there, there's a path that led me there. The posters, what was it? Is it, is it that it captures, you know, all the different amazing moments in one image, but what is it about posters in general? Um, I guess there's a, there's a thing of, it almost felt, or it almost felt like when I was discovering those posters, like, finding a new Bond movie in a way, because I know I've watched them all so many times. I know them all inside out. And then you see a new poster that you've never seen before. This is it's some really exciting imagery. And it's almost the way that the artist interprets that imagery has brings on its life to itself. And I adore that. And I also just because I can't get enough of Bond, I want it's a way to be able to see it all the time without having to look at a screen or have it on the TV have a wonderful image on your wall. That's a beautiful way to put it. All right. So uh, not to bring back harsh memories, but you've yep. just been told that you're rubbish. Then what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I couldn't take art. So I went away from that completely. Didn't do art for years. And then I sort of got into graphic design to keep me afloat while I was at university. Um, and then came out of uni and ended up in a graphic design job in a way that I was like, well, this is not temporary. This is not what I really want to do. I'm just going to plod along. And then slowly but surely, that's become my calling in life. Um, and my style as a graphic designer, I always go back to being coming from Bond, coming from Bond posters. And in particular, those, the, so I do inspiration. I take my inspiration from the Japanese international posters and all the international posters where artists would take stills or photography and merge it all together. Um, because I, I'm terrible at drawing, I'm terrible at like actual hand art. So I found those as inspiration as a way to be able to do design without having to draw things, without having to paint things meticulously on canvas and such. So, so is then let's get a little bit behind into your technique because, mm -hmm. I mean, as I look at these, I think a lot of people can make some assumptions. Some people do think it's painted or pixelated or is it composites? What, what is your medium? How do you create your magic? I'd say it's sort of a hybrid of, or of everything. And as I'm growing and with each piece, I'm finding more and more painting and illustration coming into that as I'm learning and working on it and working on my skills. Um, it's all put together in Photoshop, a bit of Illustrator. Um, it's, I really, I'm really like a cowboy designer, really. I just, <laughs> I'm the worst kind of designer because I'm just like, ah, as long as it looks good in the end, the process, I'm like, hmm. But I love that because some people, um, and, and there's nothing wrong with this. They're very, they're very dramatic. They're very thoughtful about their process. I've, I've talked to people, artists who say, all right, the first thing I do is I do a mood board and then, you know, I break it down and I create a brief. And then from there I do this. And, and, and 19 steps later, you're putting pen to paper or doing a line drawing. It sounds like you're almost like Ian Fleming. I mean, Ian Fleming just started to type. And at the end of the day, he's like, well, I hope it's good. And maybe I'll go back and edit it, but it's done for today. I, 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 yeah, I think, I guess that's, I guess that's right. Um, I have huge admiration for people that can do things I can't. I love, um, so my normal design day job is in theatre and I love watching theatre and dance and being able to watch someone do something, achieve something technically and go, I have no idea how that's made. And that's the same with a lot of artists out there. A lot of painters in particular, um, I look at and I'm like, I have no idea how you do that. And I have complete admiration for that. Um, um, but yeah, I'm not like that at all. I, <laughs> I start something and then I'll start compiling things together and I go, I hope this looks good or I'll play with the color 
and then I'll think, well, that's not quite right. So I'll play with another color and then go, oh, well, I like the original one. So now I'll spend an hour changing it all back. I'd, there's, it's, yeah, it's a much more ad, ad hoc process, I think. And whether or not that's the right thing to do for me, I don't know. So it, it works. It, I put myself through hell with it sometimes, but as long as the final product looks okay, then that's what I'm happy with, really. They say the hardest steel is forged in the fires of hell. <laughs> so that's, that maybe speaks to your artwork then, or your technique at least. But I've got to ask you about Japanese posters. I've been a fan of Japanese posters. And the thing that I find about them is for some reason, and, and I, I hate to play the um, comparison game, but I find that they capture key elements, very often kind of that, that core visual that we know and love within the movie, and they bring it to the forefront. And then they surround it with supporting material. It's almost like creating a movie to itself. But what is it about the Japanese posters that spoke to you and still speak to you? I think it's exactly that. And it's the vision as well of knowing that um, particularly those posters from the 60s and it doesn't just apply to Bond. There are so many films out yeah. there that have got the same treatment to market their posters and their films to their audience. Um, they sort of, took a completely different approach to the rest of the world and you'd get there, there will have been some guy in some office somewhere who just had nothing but photography stills he won't have seen the movie he probably didn't know the plot he didn't know the actors really they'll have known say sean connery because he was sean connery but apart from that your supporting cast they wouldn't have known so they would have gone right well what looks the most visually interesting what's going to really capture that excitement as people are walking past their advertisements and what's going to get people into those seats in movie theatres. And I think there's there's a little bit of genius, unappreciated genius there. And, and of course, the thing is, is that none of these posters have, or very rarely have artists attributed to them. We don't know who made them, who who were the people out there making these things. And I, I, that adds to the mystery of, of why I find them so wonderful. Many years ago, you may appreciate this quick story. Um, when I was a Star Wars fan, I worked with the Hildebrand brothers who did the Star Wars posters way back in the day. And I remember Greg Hildebrand telling me, because they were using a lot of my props and costumes for um, different posters they were doing for Shadows of the Empire, which was a card series and a book. And I remember him telling me that his original poster, the one with Luke Skywalker holding the lightsaber and Princess Leia holding, he said that the Japanese posters of the 50s and 60s were his inspiration. You know, that type of composite of a key element surrounded by small elements and never giving you the full picture, except for the ones kind of in the, in the foreground. Um, so it sounds like a lot of people are inspired, but all right, so big discovery question. The Bond community sees these What's the reaction? Um, it, it, for my pieces, um, it, 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 it caught me off guard completely. Um, the first one was after we went into lockdown last year. Um, it was just something to keep myself occupied and keep my skills ticking over because we were told, obviously, we couldn't go into work. Um, so I was like, right, well, I need something. I live on my, I live by myself, so I need something to keep my brain going. Um, and I approached No Time to Die as a Japanese poster. I was looking at mine and I thought, well, that'd be, that'd be an interesting idea. What would one of those look like for the film? Um, I've not seen the film, so I can take a little bit of creative license with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just put it together for fun and never really expected much of it. And, and then it just, it just went out there and suddenly people were asking me to do a few more. So then I branched out and did Skyfall and Spectre. So I thought I'll have a nice three, a nice three Daniel Craig pieces. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed there and there. And everyone, everyone in the Bond community has been really, really lovely and really accepting. Um, it's a, I've got been, I love Bond. I have Bond stuff everywhere. Um, I've been collecting it since I was young. It's been, almost an obsession of mine since I, since I was a child and I've never stepped into that online world of a community before. Um, and I'm just really overwhelmed and really grateful with how lovely everyone is and how the Bond community has a real kindness to it and a real understanding of everyone's opinions that doesn't seem to be with it. And now and again online, you can see people squabbling, you can see some discussion 
course. agreements that get a little bit heated, but everyone in the Bond community seems to have a different opinion. We all have a different Bond, we all like different films, and everyone else seems accepting of that. And I think that's a real, real, something we really should wear with pride. It's interesting because in a, in a world where you could definitely say there's a lack of unity in many cases, the Bond community shows a lot of unity um, for the most part. You, you do get you know, your outliers, but they're far and few between. I, I will say in watching from afar, I found your success to be kind of two factors, at least from a casual observer. Number one, um, the talent. And this is no, nothing you would ever admit on video, but you're incredibly talented. I, my vocation is the pharmaceutical industry, advertising and marketing. So I'm surrounded by creative people when we're not at home. Um, and, you know, just judging yours from a professional standpoint, it's absolutely key. It's beautiful. It speaks to the emotional, professional, um, visual essence of everything that you would want in an image like this. So professionally, it, it, it's perfect. The biggest thing that I think why people know your name is because you've, you've connected to a very key behavior and that's nostalgia. And we miss, and I'm not here to smack it down, but we miss those posters that used to speak to us and stay with us. And even when we saw them in the theater as, as children or in a poster book around the holidays, they would stay with us, they had legs and they would travel with us in our imagination. And you delivered that again. So you, you hit the, the strings of nostalgia pretty hard. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, on, on the talent thing, I've got to say, the talent really comes from everyone around me that I've grown and worked with over the past. Um, the, whole, the ability to um, think like a marketeer has come from working with some really talented marketing people over the years, talking with some other designers who've helped me and given me tips along the way. So I, de I definitely don't take credit for my own talent at all. Um, <laughs> um, but in the nostalgia thing, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, there's, and I, I don't know, it's an interesting debate and I don't know whether the how bomb posters are presented currently is right or is wrong. I think that's up to individual preference, um, whether or not nostalgia should be something that does drive those posters or actually whether that is something the fan community should should adopt and should do itself if we want our if we want that nostalgia if we want those posters then there is nothing stopping us from doing it ourselves whilst the series continues to look forward we can almost cherish the past if that makes sense no it, it makes perfect sense and you're right i mean i've i'm done with speculating on you know, that picture of Daniel Craig in a tuxedo turning a third of the quarter way around, you know, was that a strategic move? I'm sure it was. What was that strategic move? They know, and, and they know what they're doing. Um, the, the, the book covers and the book backs. <laughs> I mean, you've got to talk to me about this because everybody I talk to, as great as the posters are, this really struck a chord because again, the affection for the the great pan novels themselves with the artwork and you know whether you grew up with them or not. But my gosh, man, I mean, it's it's not just the art. You got the copy down too. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm glad you. Could, I'm glad we're talking about this because I've, I've just been working on another one before this video, so I've got some more coming soon, Ooh. which is really exciting. Um, uh, yeah, that that came. I don't know where that idea came to me. I was just suddenly like, "Oh, wouldn't that be interesting?" And which I started with "No Time to Die." Again, I was just like, "Well, what if there was a novelization? What if that? What if we put that in, into a cover?" Yeah, I, I um I don't know where what the original inspiration for that idea was. Whether it was seeing, knowing the "Live and Let Die" pan cover, which I based that one on. Mm -hmm. And then knowing the imagery in my head and thinking, well, that would all match up in a line there. Um, and then that series again, just, just came from doing more and more. It was a case of, I guess, it was, it was just, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at articulating <laughs> where this stuff comes from. I'm just, um, I think I really just wanted to celebrate, celebrate that, celebrate those wonderful covers which are terrific but then also we get still get 
horrific Bond books as well. The Folio Society ones, I adore them. And, and they're there. It's it, what's been interesting to me to watch is the amount of different and creative ways that people have been displaying these. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody actually turned it into a book, like an actual like novel? No, no, they haven't. But anyone does, I'd love. I would love to see that. I it's, really it's amazing because I've seen people, um, there's been some posters where they've hung up the different ones kind of askew and with the backing so you could turn it around. It's really how people are trying to make this their own. Absolutely. And that's, it still, it still blows me away that people display my work, work in their homes. I'm like, that is crazy. If you'd have asked me a while ago, I'd be like, why, why would you possibly want to do that? I'm like, wow. Um, but I love, I love seeing people having them all displayed even because sometimes even I don't I don't even have a copy of all those covers anymore oh, I, I, because I'm just like ah oh, it's just a thing I made the next one will be better I'm like ah um so it's great to see them all lined up as they are and then of course that then when I'm making new ones sort of adds a new layer to how I have to think creatively mm -hmm. because I had to think right well so for example um if I was doing a Spectre one and a Quantum of Solace one, um, Skyfall is red. So now I have to think, well, how, what colors uh, are going to sit? How, so you've not got a barrage of red, you've not got a barrage of green. So everything sort of varies. So now as I'm doing more of them, I'm taking that into consideration. And that applies to the bigger Japanese posters as well as I'm also thinking, well, the man with the golden gun is absolutely crazy. So I need to make sure. <laughs> I don't put too much next to it for the for live and let die or spy or love me just to make sure it's not too overwhelming for people if they're displaying it. And so that's right. You've got to think about those things. My gosh, it does. It really comes in. It's, it is crazy. Wow. Um, so, all right. Um, tough question. You could say no. <laughs> what, uh, what, what might you be working on right now that you say you're, uh, you're working on? Oh, oh you, don't, you don't need to. You want to leave it a bit of a secret? I, uh, I've put, I think I put a teaser out there for one of them a while ago. I put to, so I, I like to play with people a little bit and put teasers on my Instagram story. And then I get like people guessing what they are. Right, right, right. Um, a while ago, I put the one up for the Nightfire book cover and had a lot of people like, ah, it's standable, oh, it's tomorrow never dies. And no one got it. And I was like, I, I, just, I love that. I love engaging with people and keeping them guessing like that. Um, so a teaser for one of them went out. Um, another one that um, I finished, it's one of my favorite pieces I've done. Um, and it's not a movie. I'll say that. It's not a movie. It's not a Bond movie. But it's Bond. It's Bond. Oh, it's very Bond. It's very Bond. It's James Bond Jr. Oh, I wish. I should actually know. Uh, 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 Dr. Lisa Funnel would probably, would probably trying. She'll probably keep trying to get me. To and Cal, and Dr. Lisa Funnel, Calvin Dyson, who are the two biggest James Bond Junior fans I've ever met. They, I've loved they're it. they're the ones that are flying the flag of that show. My gosh, because <laughs> I am not. Trust me. All right, we got to play a little bit of a fantasy game. I've done with every artist. Okay. Okay. That we've had on, um, and it's it's probably a tough one. You've got to put your creative hat on and and your imagination flex a little bit. So Eon comes to you and they love your work and okay. they've seen it from afar. And they say to you, listen, we are, we're getting ready to do a teaser for Bond 26. We haven't even named it yet, mm -hmm. but we'd like you to design a poster for Bond 26. What are the elements? What's the What's the vision that you might have, the things that you absolutely want in the poster itself? Okay, so first, so I can really cheat this one. Um, I was commissioned by a company last year um, to do a, it was a company called Digital Spy, if you've heard of them, who are like an online news site. Um, they commissioned me to do, they did, a, they did a poll of who would be the next James Bond and Henry Cavill came out on top. So they commissioned me to do a poster with Henry Cavill as, James Bond. So I kind of oh, cheat, I can kind of cheat there. And I sort of based that on the Living Daylights initial poster because I thought new Bond, it really works. Um, but the elements I picked out there, campy and fun, I had Blofeld's cat on the front of a missile 
like a, and it was a really, I, I went, I deliberately went out there to try and find a very eighties looking, um, space ballistic missile to fit it in. So it would look sort of vintage and campy at the same time. Um, so I guess I'd go for those elements, but you've got to put bond e either you put bond front and center and you shout about your new actor and go, look, he's amazing. Or you shadow him up and you mm. tease it and maybe you don't reveal. Um, and less is more in a way, but that's not always my style. Yeah, no, I hear you. So, so you either do the Lazenby route where they kind of shadowed him or you do the Brosnan route where it's like a giant head put Absolutely. him right there front and center. Absolutely. Uh, so is that poster, I'm, I'm just morbid curiosity absolutely. here, is that poster that you were commissioned for, is that out in public somewhere? Um, yeah, it's, so that's on my, it's on my Twitter and Instagram feeds. Um, oh it's not one, I, because it was a commission, it's not one that I'll be printing or anything like that, but right. um, it's oh, there. Go check it, out. it was really fun to work on that project because it was like, I'm kind of writing Bond 26, so what elements am I going to put in? So I put diamonds in, scuba diving, a helicopter. Why not? Yeah, Why right. Not? Absolutely. And, and then I did the similar thing when, um, so the last Christmas gone by, I did a, a teaser, cheeky teaser poster for a Christmas Jones movie. <laughs> Which, uh, I, I, I couldn't help, I couldn't help myself. I had the idea and I was like, oh, I can use the gag that Christmas comes more than once a year again. Um, and so I put that together and that was another fun inviting elements and I put myself in the mindset of I'm making a cheesy movie in 2001. What do I put in there? Um, so like, fit like science and spaceships, science, because obviously yeah. it wouldn't have been well-written, grounded kind of science back then that we wouldn't have known to. Because... <laughs> Especially coming from her. Yeah. It just, <laughs> well, and then I put, I put multiple versions of her in there. So I was like, Ah, oh, you know, 2001, they probably end up like with clones or something ridiculous. Like yeah. That. Oh, so I, I, lo I love that kind of fun stuff. Oh, my gosh. I really I enjoyed that. Sean, listen, first of all, thank you so much for today, this discussion. Thank you for doing the amazing artwork. Um, we'll leave links below where people can hunt you down, stalk you, find you, all the wonderful things they do on social media. But Listen, never stop. Uh, we'll keep guessing <laughs> about the stuff coming up. But thank you again for everything you're doing. No, thank you. And thank you, David, um, for and thank you, everyone out there for keeping me going for all the support. And I do I tune into podcasts and watch YouTube videos and stuff as well. I'm working all about Bond. So I've just got Bond going through. So thank you to everybody out there that provides that stuff. You, you guys are the reason I keep going now. Oh, well, thank you. It's, uh, it's a mutual appreciation group, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, this has been Sean Longmore and David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience, and we'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information, plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you, just because we know you. Talk to you soon.